Today I would like to make for you a very special video. It's about my own experience of improving friendships over the years. It has been a long problem for me since my childhood. I would like to give you today an overview of this, a very short overview. Then I would like to give you some tips on which people and how can you find out that those people can make good friends. I'm Catherine Field. Welcome to my channel on how to be in touch with your true self, improve your relationships and find your life purpose. I try to give practical tips that can help everyone in every situation. Please subscribe to this channel, leave your comments, and you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Quora. I wouldn't say that my friendships were really terrible, but um, I was usually the one who was investing in friendships a lot more than the other person. And I, I'm not saying I'm the only one. It's just one of the things that really bothered me since I was very little. I would not go too much into detail why that was, because it would make the video way too long, and you don't need to, need all, uh, to know all of this. Uh, the turning point in my life that is very important to let you know about was a big betrayal by my, by that time, best friend, who was also my relative, by the way. And she betrayed me basically based on her own weakness, of course it was, not that she was kind of evil and she tried to hurt me. And the reason I'm telling you this is that it was so profound, it had such a profound impact on me that I had to think again and finally ask a question. How can I avoid this in the future? I understood that it was not possible to avoid such situations. Obviously, our weaknesses impact our relationships all the time. And they impact it a lot more than we think, because in many situations we think that the person is trying to hurt us or to offend us or do something else. but. It in many cases, it's just not true. However, we have to be aware of certain qualities that some people possess that would not make them good life partner or a good friend. So today I would like to give you my five points that I figured out help me to identify whether I should even begin a friendship with this person. So the first point is the most important one, I would say. It is responsibility. The person has to be responsible. I will have to explain this a little bit because today we, he we hear a lot the word emotional maturity, which is true, which is also what I mean by this. The thing with emotional maturity, I would actually like to make a separate video on this, is that it's, first of all, it's very hard to measure who is more um, emotionally mature, who isn't, because the qualities and the degree of emotional maturity can vary depending on situation. Basically, it means that in some cases you can be very emotionally mature, you can be very reliable, so to speak, you can be open to solving conflicts, and in another situation you will be completely closed off, you will not be able to manage yourself, and you understand that you should, but you cannot. You have you cannot have the this force or this um, ability to be open with the person. So, what means being responsible? Being responsible in the first place means basically being self-aware. If you're self-aware, if you understand that I have certain weaknesses that with this person show, show up all the time, and these are the things I need to be aware of because they trigger in them certain responses. That is being self-aware. Because, you know, I try to make it as simple as, as, simple as possible so that you understand. You can always see if the person over time is willing to accept something that they do wrong and change their behavior. The last one is crucial because some people can apologize even and can say, you know, I didn't mean it this way, but they keep doing the same thing. And if they keep doing the same thing, it either means they are not really involved in the relationship with you mentally, like they don't care whether you're here or there, or it means that they cannot really manage themselves. So that can be a problem because, of course, every person has weaknesses and at some point it can happen that their weaknesses will get the best out of them and it will result in a conflict. The second point that helps to see whether this person can potentially make a good friend to you is that overall they have stable relationships with other people. I mean overall because it's never 100%. They can have some issues in certain areas, maybe with their friends, maybe, maybe with their loved ones, maybe with their parents, it doesn't really matter. But overall, they have to have an ability to keep and uh, maintain relationships, especially personal relationships in their lives. Why am I saying personal? Because sometimes it is easy for people to be good at work, to, to have good relationships at work with colleagues. 
but not possible to have them with personal um, in a personal circle. Why is it important? Is because at work you have more distance to people. People really know you as a colleague. They don't know you as much as a person. You can hide some parts of you from them at work as um, that, that you cannot hide in personal relationships, which is why if you see someone who has really great um, colleagues and people respect them there and, and everything is fine, but they don't really have close friends, they don't have um, loved ones, maybe it's a reason to take some distance and to observe what is the problem. Are they not willing to get people close to them or maybe not capable? So be careful of that. Another example here, of course, if people have conflicts all over, all, whatever, whatever they go. Some people are like that. They can be quite charismatic. They can be charming. They can be very, you know, uh, sociable. But they have they have difficulty maintaining relationships. They can get into relationships fast. They have difficulties maintaining relationships. It has various reasons that I'm not going to get into. It's not the point of this video, but this is something you should be aware of. So don't just think that if the person is charming and open and can talk a lot, that they really make a good friend and they can be very, you know, reliable and so on. Observe, see how they are with other people if you can. The third point, as you, as you can expect, is they have long-term close friends. This, this one is obvious. Um, I don't need to tell much about this. Not just acquaintances, but friends. And by friends, I mean someone you mean as a friend, um, or someone you also would consider a friend. Because some people call friends someone you would call an acquaintance. That's important to understand. It also is a cultural thing, because in some cultures, what you call a friend, I would call an acquaintance, or the other way around. Okay, so be aware of that. It is important so that you see they have so, some relationships with other people, at least based on what they tell, or maybe you can observe this, the way you would have with them. Maybe they have trust. Let's let's see. For me, it's very important that I can trust the person. So if I see that they call somebody a friend, but they don't trust that person, that person doesn't know their problems, doesn't know their um, biggest pain. Especially if you know the person over the years, some some of those things are usually kind of known to you if you're a friend. It might be that what they consider a friend is not what you consider a friend. Okay. So be aware of that. Do they have long-term close friends? It doesn't have to be many, can be just one or two, that you would consider also a friend. And that would be also a good signal for you to say, well, I would like to have with them the same relationships they have with the other person. The fourth point that can show you that this person can potentially be a good friend is that they are mostly optimistic, which means they have, as I call it, constructive attitude to life not destructive, but constructive. What it basically means is that they have a belief in humanity. Because if you think that people are there to destroy you, to abuse you, to lie to you, you know, then that is not going to lead you into good relationships. Because subconsciously and also consciously, you will always expect that to happen to you all the time, wherever you go. Belief in humanity doesn't mean being naive. It doesn't mean not observing what people do to you. It means being open to new people who can treat you well because you treat them well. It doesn't mean that every person who you treat well will treat you well back because it depends again on their weaknesses, traumas, their character, on many things. But it means that if you meet that person, you believe that they can be a good friend because sometimes that happens. I come across such people sometimes that they say, I was so hurt by, by the past, I was betrayed, I was abused, everything is so terrible, I do not believe in people anymore. And then I, as someone who would like to have some sort of friendship with them, understand that when I will pour into them my energy, they will not appreciate that. This is the painful truth. People do not appreciate something good when they didn't receive a lot of that, especially in childhood. This is the problem. It doesn't mean we cannot do that, though. It doesn't mean that. However, it leads us to the first point about being responsible. Because if they are being, I mean, I have some people who had past traumas, but they are a good friend because they work on that. They understand that their fear comes from their past, not from the present relationships. And this is a different story because then I can also support, I can tolerate a lot more in this case and they can tolerate some things in me because also I have my, my own past that is not very positive. But it needs awareness. 
So if at least they're optimistic, because optimistic people actually work on themselves. They try to say, okay, I had, uh, you know, bad past experiences, but it's not something I choose to stay away in, to stay in. I choose now different people and I want my life to improve. So if you meet such people, it's easier to build relationships with them. So if somebody is optimistic, it's a very good sign you can be friends with them. The fifth point may be a little bit unexpected, but I will have to elaborate a little bit here. You must have heard about attachment styles in relationships. Most of the time people talk about that in the context of love. However, it also plays a role in friendships because uh, if you haven't heard any of this, I suggest you Google, you, you find out what that is. It's very important because in many cases it destroys or, try, or helps to build relationships. Basically, it says how we relate to other people. If we relate in a safe way, in a secure way or not secure way. There are several insecure attachment styles and there's one secure. Secure means basically you have a balance within yourself. It doesn't mean you never get anxious about the person. It doesn't mean you never doubt the person. It doesn't mean you sometimes don't take a distance from the person. But it means you do that in a short way, in a constructive way. You try to um, avoid problems. You don't manipulate. And the main thing is you make your decisions based on what is good for you. If you don't make the best decisions for yourself, you, be, you will be self-destructive. Let's say if, you, if you're a little bit aware of this, of those styles, anxious attachment style is where you run after people. Okay, you run after people. You try to convince them to be with you. You get very worried whether they're here or not. It's something that is very tiresome for the person because they have a lot of anxiety about, um, about what other people think and feel about them. If you have this as a, um, as a friend, it's hard to make friends with you, to keep friendships with you because we, you always suffocate people, okay? This is why I'm t telling about this here. If you have somebody who is an anxious friend, it also is a spectrum, so it doesn't have to be extreme. This is a good part because somebody can be a little bit more anxious than you and then this is okay. Even uh, on the other hand, they are very extreme. It can be a problem because this is going to be a friend that will call you and text you all the time. In our modern world, it's difficult because we're all busy. And they will not take no for an answer. They will just try to, you know, push it on you. I've experienced that. Uh, I've experienced this and I experienced that still sometimes. And I still have to set boundary and say, you know, it's not personal. Please understand. I have my things to do. I cannot text as much or call as much. It's just, it's just too much. So if this person is anxious, they always take it very seriously. They're not really understand what to do with that. If the person is secure, however, they will say, you know, I see something is happening. Maybe you had take your distance. If it's something that I did, please let me know. Let's talk about it. I'm open to it. If you don't want to talk, if you don't want to have friendship, that's fine by me. But if you're open to it, I'm here for you. It doesn't mean they never have their own fears and issues, but they're willing to be open about them, to be direct and to say that I'm here for you and let's make it work. Basically, it means I'm meeting you halfway. Now you have to make your own effort to come my way. If you run away from me, I'm not chasing you. Okay, this is what a secure person does. So if you meet, why am I speaking about this here? If you meet a secure person and you, you're in doubt whether you want to make friends with them or not, and especially if you're an insecure type, of any sort, dismissive avoidant, fearful avoidant, or anxious, try to make friends with them just for the sake of trying how it works, because this is an example of a healthy relationship that you maybe haven't experienced before. It's just a tip, okay? Based on my experience, why I'm speaking about this here is that I have found out with years that as soon as I got more secure, because in younger years, we, I think we all have some kind of unhealthy tendencies. As soon as I got more secure, it became easier for me to build and maintain relationships with secure people. So now my circle of friends, although it's very small because I'm very picky <laughs> with people, um, really does consist of primarily secure people. And this is a bliss because you don't question too much. You don't have to, you don't have to really decide whether it's appropriate to call them or text them. It is, it becomes very easy. So consider that. Learn about attachment styles if you haven't. It is a very good way because if you find people like that, it's actually most of the time, maybe even the main ingredient for having an easy friendship. 
an easy friendship. And especially if you're insecure, this is the practice you need to implement in your relationships anyway, because if you learn to have very good friends and become more secure yourself, if you're insecure, it will also give you better chances for love relationships because love, romantic, intimate relationships are more difficult than friendships, which is why it's easier to have friendships and um, have problems in intimate relationships. However, it's rarely possible to have really great intimate relationships and not have good friendships because friendships are uh, more distant, so to speak. So, which, which means if you're insecure and if you experience generally problems with personal relationships, start having secure people in your life as friends. It is easier to find a friend as a, a secure person as a friend than secure person as a as an intimate partner and then when you will learn and practice those skills you will also f have a higher chance to find love if you're looking for one so these were my tips again the first being self-aware and responsible the second the person has overall stable relationships this is a way to look into their um, circle they have long-term close friends they are mostly optimistic and have a constructive approach to life and they have rather secure attachment style. I say rather because nobody is 100% will have tendencies, but more most of the time this person should have a secure attachment style. It will give you a um, bigger chance of them not falling into their weaknesses and abusing you or betraying you because most of the time these things happen because we submit to our weaknesses. So. Be mindful of those things. Try to pick your people with a grain of salt. However, trust in, in the process and uh, make the right decisions. You can leave me a comment and say, how was your experience so far? Maybe you can also share some things that I have missed out on. And I'll see you next time.